dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Days of Wonders Relic Runners. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. <laughs> Hey everybody, today is the 13th and we're taking a look at Relic Runners from Days of Wonder. That's right, and this one was designed by Matthew Dunstan, I believe, uh, and it's a 2-5 to five player game, and essentially the goal is to uh, collect as many, uh, more, more of these Ew. than your opponent. Why did you choose that one? Oh, the green one, yeah, sorry. So here's the purple <laughs> one, sorry, because the green's green. You have the Just blue hold one. hold it here. Purple one, blue one, green one, and the Crystal Skull, which was a horrible... Freaking Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, in, in, in fact, where's the cover of the box? Sorry for the green screen fail. It's gonna happen. Sorry, one of these things. Oh. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, it just reminds me of that horrible Indiana yeah, Jones and the, the crystal, crystal skull and like swinging through the vines with all those stupid monkeys. <sighs> horrible, horrible. What an insult. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, keep going. <laughs> Sorry. So it's very Days of Wonder style. You know, it's a, it's a simple game. It's a fun, you know, family game. And if you've played uh, Ticket to Ride, who hasn't? There is some similarity. Yes. Uh, but anyway, you want to continue? Uh, or you yes. want me to take it? No, I, I got this. Uh, so basically, there are temples, and the purple temples are always—you always get to see what, what's underneath them. And you have a top, middle, and bottom. So here's the blue temple, or one of the blue temples. You have the bottom, you have the middle, which is the tri uh, square one, and then you have the octagonal top. O octagonal? Is that the word? Octagonal. And they all go there, plus you have rivers and pathways, and you start off in the middle, and anytime you go in the middle, go back to base camp, uh, you have to start your turn, uh, you know, you stop your turn, and you gain more resources. And it takes a resource to spend. Rations. Or rations, yes, thank you, to use these. And what color am I? I'm blue? Um, yeah, we, so, we should just, no. um, we're just, there's a bunch of different characters. Uh, they're all pretty much the same, except for on one of the sides, each character has like a special little ability. Like, for instance, this one is before the first turn, move your toolbox one step up the progression table. So there's, there's my little thing. And mine says, uh, start the game with your character on a temple ruin uh, adjacent to base camp. So instead of starting a base, man, base camp, I could start in one of these temples. Yeah. Um, so there's a very slight difference to the characters if you want to play that way. Uh, it recommends that you start the first time, but I think that it's recommending to, like, you know, family fun night yeah. uh, that you don't do the abilities. There's no problem in jumping with the abilities right away. In fact, it kind of adds just a little bit something, so I kind of would do that. Anyway, so you have your little characters. They're all freaking the same, whether you're male or female. They're just like a little dude that's doing a pump fist. You yes, know, and, pump and it's half of a person, so they're, like yeah. they're stuck in the ground. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so, yeah, so there's temples, uh, and there's three of them. There's purple, blue, and... Ivory, I believe, is the one. I think it's actually violet is the other purple one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, like indigo, violet, and ivory, whatever. And then you have these, which are, uh, what are these ones called? Ruins or pathways or something? I don't know. They allow you to put one of your color pathways. And just like Ticket to Ride, you're trying to connect from this point to this point uh, to score. And we'll get right. to that in a little bit. So there's two things that you can do. You can move one space, and then after you move, and it's important that, that I say that, after you move, you can then spend a ration to uh, perform a task, See, which we, is usually... we kind of disagreed with that. We only had one person that was like, well, they number it one and two, so it has to be this before this. I don't right. think so. I don't right. think so at all. So, so I, don't, I don't think that statement is really... There's two things you can do. You can move and you can act. Right. And you pay to act if you have a ration. So I, let's, say, let's say that I go over here to this, this kind of ruin tile. Which, you moved one. So I moved one, and then I'm going to pay a ration, which goes back into, back into there, and then this lets me put out on a pathway. So now, when I move, as long as it's a pathway, it's a free move. So I can go here and then here, which is one move, because this one's covered. This is the one move, and then spend a, spend a ration. So uh, an uninterrupted path. So if I had you know, this to this to this, one uninterrupted path, I can move for free. Yep. And then I can move. So that's the thing. is You, you, can't, you can't do this. You can't move here for free. Move and then move for free again. Can't do that. Nope. It has to be one contiguous. Although I believe uh, uh, um, an ability lets you do that. Um, and and oh, let's talk about these abilities. So the purple and blue ones are ones that you do and then you get rid of the tile. So let's say I do this one. This one lets me reposition any of my pathways anywhere I want. So if I have one here, I can put it over here because I can do whatever I want. And this one just gives you like three points, which at the end of the game, it's all about the points. So Right. 
yeah. And the purple ones are always face up, and then the blue ones are similar where they have abilities. This one's four gold, uh, and they're they're just there. Whereas the white ones, the ivory ones, are abilities that you can attach to your character. So this one stays with me until I get another top. This one being a top, the octagonal one, uh, until I get another top, yeah. and then that that replaces it. You're and only I can allowed. Have one of each. Yeah, you're only allowed one of each with an ability uh, of each shape. Right, of each yeah level of, of temple. So uh, the rations, if you run out of rations, so there's only three, so once you do three actions, you need to be back in the middle, and when you're in the middle, you can restore three. Right, but you can't so, pass, pass through the... the, the you have panel. to stop you if you to go stop. to base camp, yes. Yep. So um, really the idea is... Uh, well, I guess there's another thing. Uh, the toolboxes, oh, right? Yes. right? The toolboxes you can put on this track uh, chart yeah. here. There's three tracks that it can go up. And on. the higher it goes, uh, the more valuable it will be. Um, when it's up at the top of the track, you can still choose the one below or the one below that, you know, kind of thing. But you use that ability. Once you use the ability, your thing goes back down the mm -hmm. toolbox. There's ways to get your auxiliary toolboxes into the mix so you can have two tracks going at once, um, or maybe even all three. Right. So, so that adds kind of a little dynamic. Uh, and you didn't actually say how you get to do that. Yeah, you can do other toolboxes sometimes from levels of the temple, but also by taking any river river path. Because when you do a river path, you pass these little tokens that have a toolbox on them, and you flip them over so that they're empty. So it allows you to, to bring another toolbox into play uh, just for passing on a, on a river path. And uh, once all of them uh, get flipped, when, they'll get flipped back. The, when you pass on the river, that lets you move it up the track. I think oh, okay. we spoke. Yeah, okay. It allows you to move up the track, right? Right. Okay, so um, the idea is to exhaust these temples, because once you do, a relic pops up. Yep. So let's say I finish all of these purple ones through through my rations. Um, oh, and that's another thing. You cannot start a turn. I mean, you can't finish a turn on this tile that you started. Plus, you can't go on the same path. You can't go here and then here again, because you'd be going on the same path. Uh, but let's let's assume that that finishes, and I have a purple here, and then yeah, I guess a purple there, huh? And then the goal here to collect these is you're going to want to start on the space that has the relic, and then get to the next space that has another relic. So if I go, from, oops, my guy just keeps falling. If I go from here to here, I gain this one. Now I can't get this one because there's nothing. I'd have to have a pathway from here to here, or from when this. Right, you have to have a relic in the space right. that you start. And then the relic in the space where you stop, you get. Right. Uh, which is rather contrived. I'm going to start going with the problems right now. It, that's ridiculous. It, it makes no sense. Uh, but that's where the relic runners comes from. And it is kind of a fun, simple dynamic if you're doing with a group of, you know, non-competitors. Um, there's way too easy to screw each other when you are with a competitive group. Um, but really, it's, it's just kind of silly. Like, really, I'm going to see this relic and I'm going to run away from it to go to another relic to grab it. Well, the way I see it, the way I see it is they all have like little buttons in their mouths or something. So you're pushing a button <laughs> to open up that one so that you can get it and then you're running to that one to grab it. Well, why don't you just grab the one that was there? But whatever. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, so it does kind of get complex in in a way, you know, trying to time it right because someone can easily come in and steal yours. Right. Uh, and usually they're not you make sure that they're not right next to each other, so you have to build a couple paths in order to get it, you know, from one to the other. So like if if uh, if this one was gone, well, where's the other magenta? Right there? Yeah, there's They're that, one, together, that okay. one and this one. So, like, this one, if, if this one was gone and the relic was here, then he would have had to build a path. Like, say, I built a path from here to there, and then I went down, yeah, and then there, you know, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, so, and let's say he started here, so go ahead and start there. So, I could, well, I'd, I'd want to start here, and then I could make a free move. Right. And move one and grab that one. Right. And so if he was trying to go from there to there, then he can't anymore. He has to go find another one or to get another color. And that brings us to, uh, there are three different colors, and you're supposed to, well, there's four different colors, really. Because yes. when these exhaust, they get the green toad. The green toad. Um, and you get rewarded based on how many of the different color relics you have. So you really don't want to get multiples of the same color unless you're that one character that allows you to get more points or have that ability. Anyway... Uh, so you want to have different colors, and um, you'll score like five points for each one. Right. So it is possible to really only get a couple relics and still win if you've been getting these all along, you know, this sort of thing. So you will have to play, you know, kind of with that in mind. But at the end of the day, it's just another one of those games that's about the points. Yep. So we played it with a bunch of different folks, and most of them did not enjoy this game. 
I think that Nick and I actually see more redeeming qualities than they did. I mean, yeah. it, it could be fun. It can definitely be fun. It, Especially it's, for the younger generation. Yeah, again, it's it's one that you're not super uber competitive. It's just kind of like, oh, look at how that worked, you know, kind of thing. So I think it's a little bit, you know, younger group demographic that it really would appeal to. Right. Um, Days of Wonder is always, you know, solid. They've got great production quality. Except for these little dudes, which I don't understand. They're just kind of ridiculous. I would have rather person. would have rather had meeples than yeah. It looks like meeples in quicksand or the bog or something. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, and then you know the relics are whimsical and kind of ridiculous. But uh, I know, like the, them. The frog with a you know like a ruby Jam in, in his and, mouth. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It would be an emerald, I believe. Um, but anyway, it it is enjoyable. There is some redeeming quality. So I I don't know. I'm not really down on this. I I do find it kind of fun. It's I agree. Just, you just got to kind of play it to be fun. Yeah. And what else can be said? Uh, there's Again, there's not a whole lot of difference between the characters, but there's just enough to make it, you know, like if you have your favorite character. Like I like the the uh, leather-clad, you know, lady. Oh, the... Uh, yeah, she, yeah. Let, she lets you put a path out immediately for free kind of thing, and so I always like to have that. Know, well, you can see that. There you um, go. She's the leather-clad one. So I can immediately go to, you know, like one where I really want it, although you can have the one that lets you start on the one you want, so you might be competing That would be it, this but, one. On but the more side. paths you have as well, there are some that give you points based on how many, you know, uh, a, a, how long a contiguous path you have. So, yeah, you definitely need to work within it, and, and it can be a lot of fun. Yep. Not a complex game, so there's really nothing else to say. So, I think that's it. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow our great playlist. Game Lab has been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T shirts, a card game, art, print, shirt stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. And please uh, bear with us as we pack up and move across country. Uh, if you don't know, we have both gotten jobs with an outfit called Game Salute. They're actually doing stuff like this, maybe better. And uh, we are really excited about uh, helping indie uh, developers get their games to market. Tabletop, yep. card game, that sort of thing. So we're really looking forward to it, uh, but it's taking a lot of our time right now. You know, packing and getting ready for it. And uh, moving cross country is a big thing, so please bear with us as we kind of figure out what we're doing, get a new schedule for dual review, maybe even a new format yet again. But uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh. Coming up, it's G.I. Joe Renegades. Ah. Oh. Totally had it, man. Yay! You're like, bye, you're like, bye, I've got it. Yeah, I wasn't gonna dick around like the last two times. Yeah, it's just kinda we we just kinda hit a wall where it's like, okay, there's nothing else to talk about. Yep. <laughs> but it's not as bad as most people have seemed to think it is. I, it's fun, I I don't know. I like this. It's I mean, just it's okay. just one of those ones where if you think too hard and you really are trying to get you're like intent on getting this one to this one only and somebody steals it from you, it's like, yeah. ah, fuck, I hate this game. It's stupid. I hate this game. So there you go. Would have been interesting with like alien colonies or if they put it in some you know dark area or something like, you know, go from one mutate to the next mutate or something. Or, yeah, I don't know. What? This one's just like, ooh, relic, and it's fun and cute looking. Bright colors. Purple dogs. Purple dogs. Purple dogs. Uh, let me get That's that. like the gayest sports team ever. Purple tops? The purple dog. I played for the purple dogs. What are you talking about? Uh, I need that. Uh, no, you do.